So Natasha, um, I was very interested um, in your work and career. Of course, I would like you to tell us about your projects, Contour and your involvement in Documenta, but I would also like you to tell us something about the vision you have um, of contemporary art nowadays, uh, because you're very much working in between two geopolitical areas, which is the Western world uh, and the Eastern and the Western Asia world. So I would like you to tell us to start, um, first of all, with, the, with your vision of contemporary art, if you see similarities or if you see diversities and, um, and your approach to contemporary art. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a lot to kind of start with um, speaking about a vision, but of course it's the ground upon which we construct our ideas. So for me, um, what's been important is that contemporary art is a unique language in which a lot of complicated aspects of today's reality, but also ways of history telling can be brought to um, a kind of public mode of, of dialogue and how the exhibition itself is an animated space in which various forms of knowledge can be brought forth. And I genuinely believe that the kind of artists I've been working with, they also come from different worlds and different kinds of backgrounds. So I'm very much in, in the, the sort of um, approach is very much conditioned by these aspects. One of um, working away from a geopolitical origin, so a sense that I would restrict myself um, to operating only in South Asia or only in Europe. I've tried to assemble a series of what I think are urgent responses that come from my, my uh, part of the world, but that necessarily echo across greater distances. Um, and that has been quite essential to then also think about knowledge systems where artists perform their ideas from very um, unique uh, vantage points from different disciplines through research and a lot of it also through historical engagement. Okay. So, and would you like to go in details and perhaps you would like to talk to us about recent projects or upcoming projects? Yeah, I was just thinking this morning actually that um, it's been a year um, since we opened a project in the Venice Biennale, a project called My East is Your West, mm -hmm. in which I worked with the Gujral Foundation, which is a Delhi-based foundation uh, led by the patron Feroz Gujral. And for the first time, um, we launched an effort to present artists from India and Pakistan within the Venice Biennale. And this was to construct a new dialogue, um, also in terms of understanding South Asian geopolitics, but much more also contesting um, the dynamics of the Venice Biennale itself and uh, complicating ideas of representation and also of, of belonging. Where does one belong on a map versus how does one belong to an art world um, that has its own uh, power dynamics and its own fractures. Uh, so for us, uh, this project was something that marked a, a, a crucial step forward in how we could think about um, the region rather than the nation. And it was something that I just wanted to add uh, before we go into my current projects, because I think it was quite significant uh, in recently shaping my thought as well. Uh, another project that I, I would maybe spend a few minutes on is uh, called the Museum of Rhythm, 
and it's a project that I initiated in 2012. Uh, I was working with Anson Franco in the Taipei Biennale, um, and this was an invitation um, of creating a speculative museum framework to think about not necessarily what museums of the future will be or something like that, but much more as an as an ontology to think what is the mode by which uh, knowledge, again, cultural knowledge, could be shaped in the body of a museum. What sort of uh, logic can we create for this? And I thought then of um, the Favre's idea of rhythm analysis, um, of him as a Marxist sociologist and philosopher, suggesting the subject of rhythm analysis. And so I created um, this framework in which we observed um, how the history of modernity can be looked at, can be traversed through rhythm. So whether that's going into science and, 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 and scientific management of the body um, and schemes of labor read through rhythm features, or whether it um, goes into um, questions of occult philosophy, Eastern philosophy, and thinking about rhythm through this mode, or whether it's anthropology and um, certain cultures in which rhythm becomes a principle through which an, a, a, an anthropologist's vision enters uh, into the study of a certain community, of a certain otherness, and even creating a problem there. Um, but it was, for me, um, a, a kind of exhibition that shaped the the ways in which these boundaries of um, of science, of anthropology, of politics can enter into the very core of the exhibition yeah. and be featured um, as themselves, and not as artistic research simply, but in 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 their own um, frame, framing um, of interdisciplinary practice. I very much like the title, uh, My East is Your West. Uh, because uh, it's very much connected to our personal point of view. Uh, and I, I'd like you to ponder with us about this title, which I find very, very um, inspiring. Sure. I should say, though, that this title, uh, we were very fortunate to um, borrow from the artist Shilpa Gupta. It's a work that she... Which I love like. very much. Shupa has a way, again, of, of playing with language, of thinking about the construction of the nation state and how it impacts us as a, um, as a, as a collective body. So she uses this question of my East is your West as a kind of fluctuating series of words that um, change their direction and their nuances across a light installation piece. But we used it also for this particular exhibition it felt very valid um, as a proposition to to, to find is. a new direction and a new form of how we can be stakeholders um, for this uh, complicated terrain that we are calling um, India and Pakistan, Bangladesh being part of, um, of, of Pakistan at one point in time. How do we deal with these questions? And I think um, Shilpa's research, as well as what Rashid Rana did, um, brought these questions of proximity, uh, of mirroring, of identification um, through through trade, through informality in economies, um, through architecture, uh, back into one space. And then, is there any um, artist that you would like to mention? Artist that you're of me uh, working with. Sure. Um, if I think also to um, the current ideas behind the Contour Biennale, which is upcoming, then I would like to discuss a few artists with regard to this particular project. Okay. Um, so one of the artists that uh, I have been working with for a, for a while now is Lawrence Abu Hamdan. And he is an artist um, who is currently based in Beirut and spent a lot of time in London with the Forensic Architecture Group. 
And I've been inspired by this practice now for a few years, specifically in the way that it deals with a politics of listening and accounting of truth and testimony very much through the experience of communities who disturb this idea of geopolitical stability and are moving across a range of security networks and then become affected by them routinely. And so Lawrence's way of dealing with um, the sonic imprint on these bodies um, and on these communities uh, historically and today is something that I find quite compelling. And so um, in terms of contour as well, the upcoming Biennale, which will open next year in March, we are already in conversation with a range of artists. And this aspect of how the artist becomes a role player dealing with um, ideas of justice is something that I'm now um, focusing on. And the idea of justice, of course, is much broader than um, right to um, legal counsel, for instance. Justice is, is an abstraction in a sense, and this is why it becomes relevant uh, for us to think about it with artists. It's something that we're constantly reaching for in a society that is, in a sense, um, necessary um, a way of, of uh, dealing with our rights, dealing with our responsibilities as a civil society. But at the same time, justice is what is most easily denied depending on one's race, on one's sex, on one's point of origin and status. So I've... I feel that my current role in Belgium as is the curator of Contour is in a sense giving voice to certain kinds of practices and letting them perform on this uh, stage of the Biennale as a kind of uh, performative stage as well. Okay, and then are you already thinking about some artists that you would, would like to um, invite to this Biennale or is it too early to talk about them? No, it's not too early because, in fact, we recently had an artist talk in which um, precisely I wanted to make these processes quite public. After working on a series of biennials, I believe strongly that as a curator, what, having an open strategy, sharing the process um, with the potential public is is essential. And I'm not someone who likes to hold a uh, secret, uh, the artist list. So we already started to have conversations in public and this included um, an artist who is also an advisor to me for the Contour Biennale called Judy Radul, mm -hmm. who is based in Vancouver and also frequently works uh, from Berlin. She's uh, done this wonderful project called the World Rehearsal Court, for instance, which was an important reference point for me. So a project that she has already worked with, where she looks at the procedures of the International Criminal Court in The Hague, particularly the way in which video and media technology infiltrates the court, um, was something that I found quite fascinating. So how the court itself is is like a, a, a television set. There, there are cameras, there are microphones, the, the, the stage is, in a sense, the theater is a, the court is a theater as well. Um, the fact that um, the players in the court, when to speak and how to speak, is, is, is a script that is coded historically and systematically, um, is something that we're, we're keen to um, test at this point, once again, through, um, through her work. Um, so that is another example. And um, there's an artist uh, who I've recently got to know uh, called Louis Henderson, who is uh, more a filmmaker. And we are also working together quite closely. Um, he's dealing with questions of race, looking back at certain colonial histories, whether that goes back to the Haitian Revolution um, or whether it goes into the present of um, United States police officers um, uh, killing unarmed black uh, uh, citizens, 
it's it, he sort of merges uh, these questions of history and colonization to talk about um, current violence um, through the state. Okay. And, and what about uh, Documenta? I know you're also involved in this uh, huge uh, mess. Would you like to tell us something about um, your involvement in, in Documenta? Sure, Documenta is, um, of course, involving a much larger team. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to foreground the fact that I'm a curatorial advisor within a much larger team. Yeah. And each of us bring in um, a perspective that, of course, is informed um, through the, the range of our practice, um, also the the kind of cultural conditioning for me of bringing in um, certain kinds of South Asian voices into the upcoming documenta feels important. And it the curatorial dialogue has been sustained um, for quite some time now. And we're now in the process um, of engaging with that curatorial dialogue through various formats, such as uh, South, which is um, hosted currently as the Documenta 14 journal. Yeah. Um, we're going to release the second um, edition of this. And we've been launching South uh, in different cities, including in Kolkata in India last uh, in the beginning of this year. So I feel that all of these are platforms in which we as a team um, once more uh, shared publicly the sort of uh, artistic practices, but also the political practices that will shape the upcoming edition of Documenta. Yeah, which is a quite interesting approach, because usually Documenta has been considered a, a very German project, while it's mm -hmm. it's becoming a more kind of universal and global pro project, right? Yes, I think it's it's been a while now that um, I think right from uh, the time of... Uh, Kathleen David and Okwe Invasor, we have already uh, mapped out a much larger uh, globality and a situation of urgency within artistic conditions in many parts of the world. And that has systemically continued in very different curatorial strategies, but I think it has become, in a sense, uh, a, a mandate that that documenta has carried forward for, for a while now. And um, I feel that the current artistic director is um, very conscious of what to do in the next step forward. And so this by location of having document of 14 in Athens and Castle is something that is not simply a, a gesture, but very much a working methodology. Yeah. And it is something that we are all learning from uh, collectively. Yeah, it's quite interesting, Athens and Castle, because economically now we have these problems with uh, Germany and, and, and Greece uh, that, you know, in the European Union, uh, so it's, it's quite a complicated uh, situation economically. So it's quite interesting that we are going to link these two cities and these two countries through contemporary art. Exactly, and I think um, it's important not to separate the conditions of economy with uh, culture. And cultural flows are very much part of economic history. And last, last thing is, again, a note that I was saying while you were talking is regions versus nation states. Mm -hmm. You were talking about regions. So giving more exposure to regions um, and so this relation with nation state. I have been thinking about this question of the region in in different, very different ways. I mean, one is of course um, also when I think about um, Mechelen, um, Belgium, what is going on there today, and the conditions for the EU as a as a region, right? Um, that is something that's playing in my head right now because we're looking at a much older formation that was crucial to this region, which was the Great Council, 
that was set up in the 15th century in Mechelen, which made it the highest court for Europe. And I was thinking of what that means now, where the ruins of this historical great council can be a place for us uh, to use as, an, as a space for assembling with artists um, to rethink the, the importance of, of that um, idea of the region. And in South Asia, I find more and more that I, in a, in a sense, even due to the current climate of uh, right-wing politics, need to assert uh, an interest and an in South Asia versus India. Because I think this is something that personally, as a curator, I'm not necessarily um, motivated to do, to uh, say, okay, I'm from so-and-so part of India. I feel very much within the social fabric of South Asia. So having worked in Sri Lanka, having uh, traveled to Pakistan and engaging with the communities from there, uh, as well as Bangladesh, this was something that we did to travel and circulate in a region as a way of practice. Yeah. If you have something else that perhaps I, I, I didn't ask, but you would like to, to, tell, to, to tell us, please feel free. Sure, thanks. Um, I feel that in in terms of um, my current work, especially to do with um, the Contour Biennale, I find it um, important to address this factor of how a Biennale can become a collective act and how we can work also with different forms of practices that deal with um, the moving image in an expanded form. This is something that Contour started very early on in 2003 as a moving image Biennale and which has then grown into many different um, formats uh, of performance, installation, sound practices. And I feel that what we are doing now in taking this idea of justice as a standpoint from which we can address many questions of testimony, of witnessing, of ideas of um, what a trial or an assembly is, um, are very important to me. And also this uh, factor of polyphony, which mm. shapes the lowlands, the Flemish lowlands that have a history of polyphonic music and polyphony as a tradition. Um, I'm trying to use that in this more um, Bactinian senses of polyphony um, as a practice of multiple voices, of tonal systems, of major and minor coming together to voice a position. And um, that is something that I wanted to foreground in terms of what is upcoming um, Please, for yeah. me with the Contour Biennale. So you are going to involve um, other arts, so music as well. The artists um, wouldn't necessarily engage with music as such. I think polyphony is much more a critical idea ah, okay. that we can uh, investigate further um, through thinking around how it means to retell histories, what it means to deal with uh, tropes of fiction, um, how to think about witnessing um, and, and retelling through oral traditions, for instance. So... Um, I'm, I'm bringing these two aspects of justice and polyphony um, as conditions to work together on um, as we develop the piano. Okay, that's very interesting. Oral tradition, again, we are also now developing oral tradition because I like the idea of talking to you, so this is also oral tradition. So there are many, many things that are very inspiring while you're talking. So are you, uh, for Contro Biennale, you are, are you also involving other fields of interest or are you mainly focusing on, on arts? Well, um, one of my other advisors, um, Denise Ferreira de Silva, she is a, a writer, a scholar uh, on uh, the subjects of race uh, on uh, black cultures on on various forms of resistance under colonialism that have taken place um, right from the global south the caribbean she has studied all of these deeply um, also from uh, social activism and philosophy so um, that this is someone i have involved in the contour biennale as 
there's a voice uh, that again guides uh, us as a, as a group into the questions that I think um, are urgent um, that the BNL not to not responds to necessarily, but at least um, investigates in some way. I think there are not answers here, but um, at least to be to to be part of this situation at this point demands certain kinds of um, I guess disciplinary and experiential knowledge. So it's not that I'm going to necessarily involve a range of. Um, uh, participants who are coming from other disciplines directly but as I said there's Denise uh, who often works with the uh, within art institutions uh, in discursive ways um, or also there's Elizabeth Pavanelli who is an anthropologist at uh, Columbia University and has founded together uh, with a community Aboriginal community in Northern Australia the Karabing Film Collective and they will be part of Contour you know so there will definitely be um, a range of practices, but I wouldn't create a hierarchy between these and yeah. art as a sort of pure... Um, no, of course, of course, it's, we are not in yeah. those times anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's a, the idea is to create, again, a polyphony. Exactly. exactly. To have the idea of what is going on in, in, in the world. We need to have different point of views, a, a polyphony of point of views. 